back to a brand new Flip Live show. This is it. Don't get scared now. And real quick, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy, who was the voice of my childhood, the voice of the Batman that I will always love and respect. Uh, so, yeah, he is in timely passing just uh, two days ago. Um, and uh, I was fortunate enough a few years ago, I went to a Wizard Con in Cleveland, and I did meet him. And the great thing about it was... Um, it was dead. It was completely, there was no one in line. It was just him setting up at a desk, walked straight up to him, had a conversation, a uh, very brief conversation, uh, took a really cool picture, which I posted on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook um, yesterday uh, when I woke up and I was like, wow, Kevin Conroy passed away. Well, that sucks. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, that uh, little piece of my childhood faded away with that. But um on a lighter note, how are you guys doing? Thank you for joining me once again. The mic isn't working. Okay, of course it's not. Why isn't the mic working? Is it? Let me double check. Oh, the mic isn't working. Okay, let's try to fix this. Oh, it says something weird going on here. Let's see. Gotta, you gotta love when you have problems like that. Did that work? Let me know if this works. I'm trying. Hang on. If not, if this doesn't work, I'm going right to bed. Hang on. This doesn't just work. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Let's keep trying here. You gotta love editing software. It's just awful. Because on my end, it's working. How's that? There we go. There we go. Is that working? Are, can you hear me now? I don't know. I don't know. Sound good? Does that sound like it's working? Okay. My name is Morgan Freeman. No, you know what it was? I had my headset in that I was playing Call of Duty with earlier plugged in. And I think my computer just has learning disabilities and couldn't comprehend which microphone to use. So hopefully it's working now. I think it is. Is there an echo? Let's see. Let me know if there's an echo. I want to know that. Uh, but what I said in the opening very quickly to uh, go over it again, as I said, I am vengeance. I am night. I am Batman. And I said, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. It was, it was great. I got to meet him a couple of years ago at a wizard con in Cleveland. Took, took some pictures. I posted those on uh, Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, uh, but yeah, a little piece of my childhood died the other day. He was always the voice of reason and logic every time I got home from school. And uh, I remember rushing home, getting off the bus, and I always was able to catch the Batman animated series back in the early 90s. Okay, that's all I said in the beginning. Uh, without further ado, how are you guys doing? Thank you for joining me once again. And of course, we had to have a technical issue because without it, what, what would be going right? All right, let's dive into your questions here. And uh, we got one here from Evil Broomstick. Thank you for the super chat. What would your outfit slash name be if you were in WWE? I would be called Johnny Flickster, and I would just be a douchebag. That's what I would be in WWE. Uh, Yalen Martin says, hey, John, I saw Wakanda Forever. Really good. I think it was okay. I didn't love it. I, I think it felt like a real movie in Phase 4 because we haven't had too many of those. Uh, outside of uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, I haven't really been a big fan of Phase 4. And at least this film took itself somewhat serious. It wasn't just goofy slapstick comedy jokes. And it, it felt like an actual film uh, that was completed and not chopped together. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, it was it was entertaining. Uh, would I go back and rewatch it over and over? No. Is it in my top ten Marvel movies of all time? Absolutely not. Do I think it's better than the first Black Panther? Absolutely. I think the narrative is far more interesting. I think the visual effects actually look like they were completed. And the third act of the film, I think, was way better in comparison to the third act of the first Black Panther film. Just my personal opinion. Um, so yeah, I I it was what I expected it to be from the trailers. I do have some issues with it. Um, actually, uh, uh, quite a few issues, and it really a lot of my issues just come from the style of modern day Marvel films. I just feel like they all share this same color palette, very CG green screen look, and I get it. You know, whenever you have a superhero movie with super powered characters flying around on screen, fighting people on top of things floating in the sky, yes, you're going to have green screen. I get that, but there's such a way to make green screen look subtle. And slightly more realistic and not just make it look like that green screen Marvel look that we've been getting for many years. I don't know what it is. They just, everything that Marvel shoots, even if they go outside and they have a fight on a bridge or a conversation in a park, they have this urge to shoot it in a green screen. I'm just like, no, you could, you could actually just physically go there. You could film it like a, a, a conversation between two characters on a beach. Like that's, you can make that happen. Like it's, it's a, plausible thing just to shoot but for some reason they just have to slap green screen shit in behind every character and i can just feel this weird softness halo glow effect every time they're talking and it's sort of like i'm just like ugh, like can you just go shoot that practically just a few scenes here and there um did i answer your question i don't know but thank you <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one comes from the White Skull. What are you? What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I don't know, man. That's only a couple weeks away, right? Like ten days, something like that. Um, I don't know. Eating turkey, maybe going to the lady friend's house, maybe going to my mom's house. I'm not quite sure. Um, I, as long as I can eat some turkey and mashed potatoes and a little bit of cream corn, maybe a piece of pumpkin pie with extra whipped cream. Absolutely. Uh, I'll be content. That's all I want to do on Thanksgiving. The next one comes from Matt Movie 611 Favorite Jurassic Park character? Come on, man. Dr. E. Malcolm. Uh, 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 you're going to have uh, uh, dinosaurs on your uh, dinosaur tour? Absolutely. That is my spirit animal. And you know, the, the more I always use this as a reference point or like a reference or an example when I talk about charismatic actors elevating the characters that they're given. If you want to put anyone else as a character of Ian Malcolm, like if you cast any other guy, like cast some, who's a modern day actor, just whoever, if you would have put them in the role of Ian Malcolm, you wouldn't remember them 25 years later. It's only because of Jeff Goldblum that you remember that character so well, just ele elevated that, that the source material. I love it. That's, that's the problem with Hollywood. We don't have enough of those charismatic actors anymore. We have generic guy number one and generic guy number two. That's who we plug into these roles. The next one comes from Itchy Elbows. Great name. I love it. Think I've outgrown the MCU. It is so boring. You know, I actually thought for a while there I outgrew the MCU because I was like, I just genuinely don't give a shit anymore. I just, I don't. But you didn't. Neither did I. It's not that we outgrew it. It's that it de-evolved into something more primitive and worse than it was. Right? Going back to the beginning. Going back from OA to maybe like 2019 with the conclusion of Endgame. We liked that. You know why? Because it had quality storytelling. Not every single movie was great. There were some weak points. Absolutely. Captain Marvel, I'm talking to you. But overall, the continuation, the culmination of this, all these different stories going to one hiatus, one big climax, we, we enjoyed that story. We liked it. Now we're on the downward spiral fall right into the ground, and we're eventually going to crash because I think the fatigue is setting in. The movies are not as good as they once were. They just weren't. The characters are not as good. The performances are not as good. The scripts, the stories... It feels a little bit jumbled and it's in a rebuilding stage. And we're, really the best way you can describe it is it's sort of like if you had a pro NFL team and all of the starting players were injured and now we have the, the second string and third string players coming in. That's what it feels like. It's like a rebuilding phase. But at the same time, 
what's the best film that we've had so far in phase four? I mean, you could say Wakanda forever. I would personally say it's probably Spider-Man far or Spider-Man no way home, which they threw everything they could into that movie to make it as entertaining as possible. But, um, going back to the first part of your question is I went back just a few days ago and rewatched captain America civil war. And they, Without Iron Man and Captain America, those two pivotal characters, that's what made the first three phases of Marvel what it was. Like that, those characters and that storytelling, I was like, damn, this is good stuff. When they were fighting each other at the end of Captain America Civil War, I could feel something. I was like, holy shit, it's been a while since I felt these emotions. I actually care about everything happening in this movie right now. And it's so well filmed and choreographed. I was like, oh God, can we go back to this, please? Um, like I almost appreciated it more than I ever have. So yeah, I don't, so to sum up my thoughts, I don't think I've outgrown it. I think it's just, we should be getting better stories and movies than we are. It's like we, we were evolved so far. Now we kind of like went, we regressed in a way. All right. The next one comes from. Night King on says you missed my chat, which you. Uh, all right, let me find it here, man. Night King, can you can you ask it again? It didn't pop up, and I'm sorry for that, but I'll find it. All right, just ask it again. I'll I'll, I'll find it. Ask it in the normal chat. Because it did not pop up over here. Faisal H says, smartphones ruin a childhood. I'm glad for the 90s. Aren't we all? They do. Smartphones not only ruin, I would say, people. Because now everyone has a slight form of ADD. Is also, they ruin movies and storytelling. Because whenever you can just go, hey, uh, hey, don't don't go there. It kind of ruins the, the story of a movie. Like you can, now you can just fix any problem with your phone. You can just text it and fix it. I mean, could you imagine if they just had smartphones in some of your favorite movies, how easily that problem would have been solved? <laughs> All right. The next one comes from, I, I agree. That's why when it comes to storytelling, have you ever noticed they do everything they can to get rid of phones? Like you have to get rid of that equation to make a better story. That's why great stories existed in films prior to like the easy accessibility of smartphones and technology. And so I, like, that's why like eighties and nineties movies are still classics to this day. You could just get away with more without calling up someone and figuring out the problem instantaneously. So sometimes I secretly wish we didn't have smartphones. Uh, Michael Burton says Eternals was the worst of the phase four. Yeah, it was. I, I, I couldn't imagine if you paid me a hundred dollars, I don't think I would physically take the time to go back and rewatch Eternals. I, I don't think I could physically do it. Um, and I, I'm curious what they're going to do going off. Cause it doesn't seem like anyone really liked the movie and going forward. Are they doing anything with the Eternals? Are they doing anything with that, that franchise? Are they kind of just going to pretend like it didn't exist? I'm curious. Mason Arnold, welcome to Don't Get Scared. Thanks for becoming a member, man. Uh, Night King 01 says, are you reading the right chat? Yes, I am, man. I'm reading the right chat. I have three chat boxes opened up. I'm reading it. Uh, Night King 01, I see a thing here from 10 days ago, but nothing. Oh, here we go. Now, Now it popped up. There you go. Uh, you know, when I heard that he passed away, I almost shed a man tear. The only time a celebrity's death made me choke up a bit. Best Batman ever. Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Well, best Batman voice ever live action, maybe a different story, but yeah, man, uh, great voice. Uh, seemed like a really nice guy, very down to earth, um, very untimely passing. So that's life. It makes you stop and think, doesn't it? But uh, thanks for the question. The next one comes from 
Itchy Elbows, who says, rest in peace, Kevin Connery. Absolutely, we talked about that. Um, I kind of want to go back and watch some of the Batman animated series now. I need to go back and, and revisit some of those. It's been a couple of years since I've uh, went down that that dark journey into Gotham City. Uh, Carter Lovejoy says, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Uh, Michael Parton says, if Kim K joins the MCU, I may officially be done. Kim K? Who the hell is Kim Kim K? What's that? I don't... My, You guys are talking to me on a day where my brain is mush. Literally, I have mash, mashed potatoes for a brain right now. Abbreviations are just going to go over my head. Kim K, I need a last name. I think they're making Eternals too, but why? Yeah, I don't know. Who... Who do you know that said, oh, Eternals is my favorite Marvel movie of all time? I haven't met that person. Do you know that person? <laughs> I was hoping I was hoping Kevin Conroy would live to be 100. Yeah, fair enough. I would too. Uh, the next one comes from, and I do have a, um, I do have a flick trip video meeting Kevin Conroy, actually. If you search, um, shit, I forget which video it is. I think it's called meeting the real life Batman. Um, and it's a flick trip video from 2019. So go check that out. If you want to see it, it's on this channel. The next one comes from double chief. What the hell happened with the blockbuster show? Oh, Kim Kardashian? Oh, that's who I thought you meant, but I was like, Kim Kardashian joining the MCU? Why? What would she, what talent does she have to give anything? Isn't it odd? With no talent whatsoever, you too can become a billionaire. Uh, the next one, uh, the Blockbuster show. Yes, I did watch the first episode. And that will be the first and last episode I watched of the Blockbuster show. Just a truly abysmal, terrible show that's everything wrong with modern day television. It's just the most bland thing. It felt like it was written by 12 year olds who thought these inside jokes were funny. And then they do reference like streaming and nostalgia just a little bit, but it just feels so disingenuous. Um, it's, it's literally everything I wouldn't do if I made a blockbuster series. Like you have this great name. You have a built-in audience of people who love and crave nostalgia. But what are you going to do? You're going to set it in 2022, where it's the last blockbuster in existence. It's like, that's not that's not enticing. That's not interesting. I don't think anyone wanted to see that. If it were, if it were me making a blockbuster series, I would set it back in 1995. I think you could have a really fun ensemble cast of characters. I would have it in the same tone of something like The Office or the movie Waiting from 2005 starring Ryan Reynolds which also takes place in like a workplace environment, which I think would work well for this. Um, and there's so many things you could do. You could, you know, season one could be like a couple of years in the, in the nineties. Then in season two, you could jump ahead to the early two thousands. Uh, and then like in season three, you could, you could get into the phase where Netflix and Redbox and all these other things were starting to be implemented. But can you imagine that amount of nostalgia you could, you could cram into that mo that show if it was set in the early nineties or mid nineties, just the possibilities are unlimited, but they didn't do any of that. Okay. The next one comes from, sorry, the chat's a little slow over here. Uh, superhero fan 198 who said nothing, but thank you. I think you clicked the sticker, not the super chat possibly. Michael Parton says she's interested in joining the MCU. Yeah, that's, she can be interested all she wants. I mean, I don't think she would help sell any, any tickets to it. <laughs> uh, the next one comes from be kind to yourself and others. And thank you for the very generous super chat, man can create a don donation option for your new TV. So we can crowdfund you. <laughs> uh, you know what, man, uh, the super chats are enough. Or if you want to join my patron or you become a YouTube member sufficient for me. Um, but thank you. Very generous. And thank you for the, uh, the crowdfunding of the TV. I do appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, I'm still getting the TV settings all dialed in. I've been tweaking it back and forth, trying to get it just right. And, uh, the thing I don't like about the TV. So I have an LG OLED 83 inch, but every time you change the HDMI input, even though I put 
um, like my settings for all the HDMI's or the inputs, like it didn't carry over. And some of them are like, if you have a fire stick, it looks different than if you're using the built-in apps on the TV. If you plug your HDMI in for your 4k player, then you have to go back and redo all the settings again. That gets a little bit tedious, but at some point I will do a, a review of the, the new TV and share the settings I'm currently using. I did not get it professionally calibrated. Uh, some people do that. I don't like it. I've found sometimes when you do like a professional calibration of a TV, though it's technically right and accurate, it's not exactly pleasing to the eyes. Um, so that's just my thing with it. But but thank you for that a very generous super chat. Uh, Superhero fan 198 says thoughts on Raid Redemption and Raid 2. I was not a big fan of Raid 2. The first one was great, phenomenal. I wish they would implement that same kind of style and tone into a new, new Mortal Kombat movie, which I think would be great. But unfortunately, it seems like they're just incapable of, incapable of doing that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like the first one. I've only seen it maybe twice, and it's been a long time since I've seen it. But um, I always enjoyed it. Raid 2, I felt like it felt like a little bit too long. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. The next one comes from Claudio Rogajan. Speaking of Conroy, what is your favorite Batman the animated series episode? One of mine has always been the Two Face Origin episode. I think that's been in, like, voted in the top five best episodes of the animated series. I would also go there. I would also say the uh, Mister Freeze episode was great. Um, I always enjoyed any episode that featured Bane. Uh, I don't specifically remember the episode name or title, um, but th those are always sort of my favorites. Um, you know, the, the, some of the episodes I never liked, I did not like when Clayface was on the show. I don't know why I just never liked Clayface. I, I just couldn't get into a giant, like blobby turd fighting Batman. It just never gave me what I wanted. I know some people like Clayface. I'm no, I'm sorry. Mason Arnold, uh, who has become a member. Thank you once again. Luke O'Neill says, Mask of the Phantasm, best Batman movie. A lot of people love it. Great animated Batman movie. For me, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Uh, I know the, the cool thing would be for me to say so right now, but unfortunately, I've just, I've liked Mask of the Phantasm. I just, it's never been my favorite of the any Batman movies. I mean, favorite Batman animated movie? Okay, I can, I can give it to you there. Uh, Brevin's Flicks and Games says, Hey, John, all of us Batman fans are heartbroken over the loss of Kevin Conroy, who I think we can agree was the definitive voice of Batman. Yes, he was. Yeah, he had a great voice. He had a great resonating voice. Um, and I got to hear that voice in person. Uh, let's see. The next one comes from have you seen, have you seen the new 4K Goodfellas special editions coming soon? Part of the Film Vault collection from Vice Press. I have not. I did not. I did not see that. I know nothing about it, man. It's it's hard to keep up with everything nowadays, to be honest with you. Um, I really, I did, yeah, I didn't. Speaking of 4K movies, though, um... What I'd like to do right now, because I tried, I tried, I assure you, I tried to reach out to three different people to give this shit away and no one responded. So I'm going to do it right now. I did an unboxing for this and a whole bunch of other great things that they sent to me in one big ET box. And I actually went back and rewatched this for the first time on 4K uh, last night because it's been a while since I watched ET. I still stand by everything I've ever said about it. I like it. I respect it. I think it's iconic. There's some great moments. Uh, one thing I did re I re last night when watching it again, though, Elliot, the Elliot's little high pitched voice, man, in this movie, hurt your fucking eardrums. Like my ears are bleeding listening to him. Anyway, I tried to give this away. Like I said, I reached out to multiple people that did comment on that video and no one responded. No one. So right now, right here, I'm going to give this away. So over in the normal chat, right here on the live show, someone say something witty and funny if you live in the U.S. Um, for the next 30 seconds, whoever in the next 30 seconds can say the wittiest, funniest thing about E.T. wins this shit right here on 4K. And I will have Universal um, 
they'll send it out to you. But what you're going to have to do is if I do pick you, you need to email me. And I, once I pick a winner, I will tell you how to do this. So if you want to win this shit for the next 30 seconds, starting right now, say something about ET that's funny and witty. Go. As I answer the next question. <laughs> uh, oh, and speaking of actually, um, I'm going to talk about this. This was sent to me. Speaking of 4K movies, planes, trains and automobiles, the definite quintessential Thanksgiving Day movie. When it comes to Thanksgiving movies, this is this is it. This is the one you watch. What else is there? Now, I've owned like seven other editions of this because they keep sending me the Blu-ray copies every year, but I've never owned, I don't think, I think this is the first time the 4K has been out. So, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles on 4K. So, one of my favorite John Candy movies, Steve Steve Barton movies, I love movies like this, just like the two odd couple teaming up to go on a road trip, and uh, I will definitely be watching that this Thanksgiving Day season. Oh, better Zaga, who's been a member for 23 months. I don't really like the Iron Girl, Iron Man Girl character. Yeah, Ironheart. I actually, I, I didn't dislike her. I think if they're talking about introducing her into a TV or a Disney Plus series, I think I could see that. I could see that happening. I didn't dislike her. I thought she was okay for the this the movie. Um, but like, it's neither here nor there. I will just say whenever she was flying around in the iron heart suit, it just looked like, it almost looked like <sighs> really bad CG. <laughs> it looked, something looked off. Michael Parton says, have you seen absolute power? I don't think I have. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Claudia Rojan says, E.T. looks like my dead uncle. Uh, Jesus. Uh, E.T. actually looks like me when I first started YouTube. I was all shriveled up and skinny with a big old head. E.T. looks like a dry old raisin. Okay. Those aren't pillows. That's E.T.'s head. E.T. the alien with a glowing red finger, not a red dinger. You look like E.T. Those aren't pillows. Uh... Come on, I think you guys can do better than this. When John was skinny, he actually looked like E.T. Thank you. It is true, though. All right. Um, Witty and funny. M&Ms have never recovered. Actually, it's Reese's Pieces. I don't know. This E.T. looks like a dry old raisin really hit me home. hit home for me. Let's see. <laughs> uh, that was a good comment. Uh, let's see. John Flickinger is ET before bulking up. Thank you, David. Okay, that's it. Stop, stop, stop the comments about ET. Stop it. Stop it. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with um, David Valencia. John Flickinger is ET before bulking up. There you go. I'm going to go with you. So, David, here's what you got to do from your official YouTube Google account. I need you to email me at johnflickchannel at gmail.com. The, uh, that email is in the uh, description of all my videos. Johnflickchannel at gmail.com. Email me right now with your your address and your name, and make sure you do it from your official YouTube Google account. That way, I know it's really you. Thank you. You win. David Valencia. I got your name. I got you. All right. There you go, man. You win ET. Enjoy that shit. And don't forget to phone home with that little pointy, grease, greasy, long finger. Okay. The next one comes from Itchy Elbows. Do you want kids or do you like money and sleep? I really enjoy sleep. I will say that. If you give me 12 hours of sleep, I will take all 12 of those hours and I will sleep and I will go into a dream fantasy reality where everything is just instantly better. Um, one day, maybe one kid. I'm, a, I'm, I think I could do one. I could pop one kid out. That is it. That is all. I, I only have enough love and attention to give to one kid because even if you have two kids, one's going to be weird and fucked up. It's always the case. You have the one normal one. The other one's weird and craves attention and always is the weirdo. 
it always happens in every family. Everybody I've ever known, when there's two kids in their family, one is a weirdo and one's kind of normal. And I'm okay with having a weirdo kid. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm answering your question. I just want one. But not anytime soon. Uh, Shut Up Cat Productions says... Well, let's see. Shut Up Cat Production says, Hey, John, John, do you ever get sick of answering the same questions? Also, Kevin Conroy looks sick for a while, unfortunately. And why can't I do $2 Super Chats? I don't know why you can't do $2 Super Chats. I don't know. Um, so, some questions I answer over and over, but I just think some people don't watch every single video, and that's okay. Um, typically, if it's a question I've answered a lot, I give a very quick answer. But I, it's okay. I'll answer anything. Uh, Kevin Conroy, yeah, I have a few theories on Kevin Conroy. Um, great guy. I, I do have a couple theories. And he has looked a little bit, he has looked ill for quite a few years, I would say. But, um, yeah. But when I saw him three years ago, I mean, he's, he sort of felt, he seemed fine. Like he, he got up, he you know, took a picture. He was very interactive, you know? So it's hard to say. Uh, Luke O'Neill says you hype for avatar too. The trailer looked pretty. The trailer looked like wallpaper, like fantastical wallpaper that you could put on your PC in 2009. Yeah. It, I, I want to see avatar the way of water. I really do. I'm looking forward to, it. I'm hoping it's good. I'm going to give James Cameron the the benefit of the doubt um, because it is James Cameron. I liked the first Avatar. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to check it out. If it's not very good, I'm going to lose all hope and faith in any sequels that they have going forward. And I've heard that James Cameron has a plan that if this next one doesn't go as well, they're sort of going to tap out before they hit five movies. So we'll see how well this one does. Do people want to see the new Avatar movie? Are they clamoring to see it? Who knows? John will be blessed slash cursed with octuplets, octuplets, octuplets. Um, yeah, I don't, please don't give me eight kids, please. Um, I'll just, I'll give, I'll, I'll keep one and I'll keep the one I want and give the rest away on like Craigslist or something. I'm kidding. Uh, all right, David, thanks for the email, man. I'll have Universal get in touch with you. Legion says, Rip Kevin was perfect Batman. He was my Batman. He was all of our Batman. We shared him. Uh, Bastiel says, Hey, John, I just watched Mad Max in 4K. It's awesome. My rankings would be Mad Max 2, Road Warrior, Fury Road, Mad Max 4, Thunderdome. Well, I'm confused what you did there. Okay, yeah, I you really it's Road Warrior and Fury Road for me. Thunderdome, in my opinion, when it comes to the Mad Max films, I'm not a big fan of. I'm not a really big fan of the first Mad Max movie. I just never liked it that much. Um, but Road Warrior's perfection. I actually would say at one point I actually enjoyed Road Warrior more than Fury Road, but Fury Road has grown on me. I think the only weak point in Fury Road is honestly Tom Hardy. Um, but. Thunderdome, the first act of Thunderdome, if they could have just made that the entire movie, would have been phenomenal. That first act is perfection. Like it's almost like they blew their load way too cl way too quick in the first act because you have the uh, Thunderdome battle with Master Blaster. The whole concept of all that is really intriguing. You got Mel Gibson giving a great performance, but as soon as he leaves Barter Town and goes out into the desert and meets the little weird kids, I just like, I want to stop watching it every time. So when it comes to Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, watch the first 40 minutes and then just stop. It's a great movie that way. All right. The next one comes from Chris Salamu. How was the Vegas trip? Did you enjoy? I did. I went to Vegas. I had a, the cool thing about doing these live streams is you never know who's watching. And a buddy of mine uh, named Ricardo uh, has been watching the live streams and he's just so happened to be opening up a, a club in the Vegas area called fantasy lab. 
uh, which you should check out if you're in Vegas. It's sort of like a nightclub and there's like an interactive experience where it's sort of like a dreamlike sequence of different rooms that have different vibes, vibes and themes. And there's a lot of LED screens and technology that sort of immerse you into what you're looking at. So um, really, really cool place. And uh, so I went to Vegas. He invited me to go out there and uh, stayed at Treasure Island. Played a little roulette. Um, I won $37. I was down, but then I came up $37 and instantly quit. Um, I did see uh, Circa, uh, Circus Delay, Circus Olay. Um, I saw the O show, and um, yeah, it was a good time. Vegas is so expensive, though. And I've come to the realization and the conclusion for the last couple of years. I think I just, I hate people. And when you go to Vegas, you encounter like the worst of the worst. Now, it's a fun place to people watch. But also, you have to like walk by all these crowds of people. And it's just like people you don't want to be within proximity of. And you're just like, ugh. It, it's literally like becoming a small parasite and going through like the sewer system. You know, when you go to Vegas. It's like you're trying to avoid everyone, but you just know you're going to get covered in shit. So... Uh, yeah, Vegas was fun. Uh, it's fun to go for two days and I got to get out of there. But thank you. Thank you for the question. The next one comes from Carter Lovejoy. Thoughts on Rihanna song, Lifting Me Up, that's on the Wakanda Forever soundtrack. Last Super Chat was a Taylor Swift lyric from her new song, Antihero. Yeah, I think I the Rihanna song, I do recall it. I think I added it to my... Uh, did I add it to my uh, TikTok first reaction to the movie or something? I don't remember. It's okay. I vaguely remember it. Uh, West Sports Talk says, when's the girlfriend update and screw Chris S. Uh, what do you mean the girlfriend update? What do you? I don't know what you mean by the update. <laughs> Have you ever been to Disney World? I have not. Crazy and oddly enough, I've never been there. Uh, one day I will go, but you know, the last couple of years, something about the uh, the crowds and the people, it's just overpriced right now and really busy. I just, I'm at a point in my life where if I have to go to a theme park and I know I'm going to be in line for two hours, I'm just not going to go to the theme park. I, I have been to Universal Studios a few times. I, the last time I went was like a year ago. And that's fun. I, I would I would actually be I would probably rather just go back to Universal Studios, to be honest with you, than than go to Disney World. Uh, the next one comes from. What is this? OK, Mason Arnold says. The death of Kevin Conroy hit me much harder than I expected. I found out as I got back from lunch at work and the rest of the day, I was a blubbering mess like Tobey Maguire at the end of Spider-Man 3. Just crying right before you dance while you wear eyeliner. Yeah, I get it, man. Absolutely. It's weird. It's weird when like these these idols and these people you grew up with in your it's like hey, these people that you grew up with when you're a kid or in your childhood, when they pass away, it's like that a little piece of your childhood fades away. It's it is sad. Um, <laughs> all right. The, the next one comes from, uh, uh, Rex says, what are some famous movies you haven't seen? Man, there's probably a handful. I haven't, um, blue velvet. There's one. I don't think I've ever watched, um, I don't think I've ever watched Casablanca. There's one for you. The next one comes from Marco Carmona. Would you rather be a co-worker investment banker with Patrick Bateman or be a co-worker with Lewis Bloom's network company? Oh, I'd definitely rather work with Lewis Bloom. I will be, I will have those steady hands and I will do whatever it takes to get the shot. Mr. Bloom. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Imagine being like a night crawler, man, running around at night, recording crazy things, always on the go. Please. Yes. Thank you. I will take that job right now. I'll be an intern. You don't even have to pay me whatever you need. I'll get, I'll get it done. Uh, the next one comes from Caleb Richardson. You could even give this a dark comedy twist if you wanted to set an 05 to 08 and have the employees slowly realize they're working for a dying company. Yeah, when it comes to the Blockbuster series, no, no, no. That would be a great third season of a Blockbuster show. Like I said, first season takes place in the 90s, second season, early 2000s, third season is like the dwindling downfall of Blockbuster. That's what I would like to see. But of course, you know, they can't do that. Michael Parton says, Batman's villains we still haven't seen on the big screen are Clayface, Man Bat, Hugo, Strange, Killer, Moth, and the Ventriloquist. Yeah, I, some of those I don't feel like will translate that well to the big screen. Like, I don't really want to see Man Bat. Just putting it out there, I don't really want to see Man Bat. Uh, Hugo Strange could work well. Killer Moth, not a big fan. The v- Ventriloquist... There's other characters that are similar that I think would work better. Um, Itchy Elbow says, your opinion on college, is it a waste of time? It depends what you want to do. And it just really depends what you want to do. Tell me what you want to do, and I'll tell you if it's a waste of time. Do you want to be a doctor? You got to go. Do you want to be an engineer? You got to go. You need these certifications. You need these pieces of paper that accreditate you as a person. Uh, You need these things, and you, you just do. But outside of that, I, unless you need the education, the the diploma to get hired into that job, then try to go get the job you want. Just go try to get it. And then if you can't, then go to college. It's always there. I mean, you don't even need to go to college anymore. You can get any online degree you possibly want sitting in your underwear at home. It's all the same shit. It comes from the same accredited school other people actually had to physically attend. So what's the point? Um... You know, if it was me going back, I wish I would have just went to an online school, got the piece of paper and and went on with my life rather than waste eight hours every day of my life driving there, sitting in a class where only 10 percent of the time I was learning anything useful. The rest of it was just generic high school classes. I've already obtained the information like I don't need to take a typing class. I know how to do it. So, yeah, in, in regards to that, yeah, I think it's sometimes it's a waste of time. Other times it's a necessity. Blue Velvet is cool. Yeah, I need to check it out. There was a movie, actually, I, no one's ever talked about it. No one's ever mentioned it once in my life. And the name of the movie is uh, called Miracle Mile, and it came out in 1988. Now, I watched a trailer for it uh, yesterday, and for some reason, I've never heard of this movie. I've never seen it, and it's very, very 80s, but it looks really good. Like, I almost was watching this thinking this would lend itself to a very good, good modern day remake of this. Um, I don't know much about it. Pretty much. It feels like it's the end of the world and only one guy knows about it. And he's trying to figure out a way to escape. And it's almost like very realistic in the sense of like, if, if someone called you on a phone and said, it's the end of the world and you knew for, and you believed that person, what would you actually do? That's sort of the concept of the movie. So if anyone's ever seen miracle mile, let me know in the chats. I'm curious. Is it good? The trailer looked really intriguing. It looked pure 80s, which is what I kind of want. You gave the best advice you could about college, John. Well, thank you. That's what I do. I give you solid advice. All right. Sometimes, not always. But keep in mind, I am just a guy on YouTube who talks about movies. So what the hell do I really know? Okay. (laughs) All right. Let's keep going. The next one comes from. West Sports Talk says, sad I lost the giveaway. You are a dried raisin. I'll take it. (laughs) It's hard to give shit away on YouTube nowadays. I have, you know how many giveaways I've done and I've reached out to like 20 people and no one responds. I'm like, all right, I got to go to the next person. Uh, Claudia Rogajan says, I know you don't like Clayface, John, but I think most people say they like Clayface from the series, not so much. 
he sucks and everything else. Yeah, I just think I think if you were gonna have like a delusional, crazy character who had um what's the term when you have like a self physical issues? Uh, what is the name of that? Anyway, I think if you had somebody who had like got constant plastic surgery on their face and didn't turn into a big giant brown turd like he does in the animated series, then I think you'd have an interesting character who could almost disguise and camouflage themselves. But at the same time, like you can only go so far with a character like that. I, I don't know. It's just that's not necessarily a foe I would like to see Batman go up against. Uh, Double Chief says, I made a verified account of you on Twitter yesterday and proclaimed Halloween ends was a masterpiece. Well, that sounds like a waste of $8. Um, but either way, man, good. The, should I get a verified account on Twitter for $8? I'm, de- I'm debating if I should or not. It's sort of scary though. Anyone can do that. You can say that you're any company, have a verified account and people who aren't very aware will believe it. So it's it's a really wild, wild west type of scenario on Twitter right now. A lot of scams. A lot of things are going down. Claudia Rojan says, I'm joking, by the way. My uncle's not dead. I, I didn't think he was. Uh, Alex Carr says, I'm just throwing this out there based on your collection video, but you should set your Suicide Squad Blu-ray on fire immediately. You know, I've thought about that. And what I would, sometimes I like to keep bad movies in my collection, just like I have it. And sometimes if I ever have to like reference it or do something like to hold it up as a prop, that's why I keep those in there. They're like props at this point. Uh, But thank you. And by the way, if you guys missed my complete movie collection video, the brand new one after three and a half long years of waiting, well, I put that up last week over on the Flick Pick channel. Go check it out if you missed it. Um, and uh, YouTube hates me. Uh, so uh, I remember um, a time on YouTube when YouTube would put my videos in the browse feature so other people could see my videos. That doesn't exist anymore. Like, unless your subs see your video, no one will ever see it outside of that. But either way, if you watch the collection video, thank you so much. If you haven't, well, go check it out. It's about an hour long. And it'll probably be the last collection video I do for at least two years. Kenji says, hi, John. Unpopular opinion in comparison, but which is superior? Million Dollar Baby or Raging Bull? I have only seen both of those films one time. Both of them. Now, Million Dollar Baby is so depressing. I don't know who ever like says, I'm going to watch Million Dollar Baby today. Fucking depressing. When Hillary, Hillary Swing's head hits that stool, I'm just like, ugh. So, um, I don't know. I'd probably rather rewatch Raging Bull, to be honest, if I had to pick one to rewatch, but neither really get my vote. Michael Barton says, I saw Halloween ends in theaters day one. Man, you should have just stayed home and watched that shit on Peacock. Body dysmorphia. Yes, that's what I, that's the term I was thinking of. Thank you for that. You should check out Miracle Mile. I'm definitely going to check it out. Uh, Hi, John. I've been watching all of your content. Thank you, man. John is a philosopher. I am a philosopher. You want real solid advice, you come here. Right or wrong, I'll give you the honest truth. What happened with you and Chris Duckman? Nothing, man. I just... We're both dudes in their mid-30s. He has like two kids, a life. He's doing his thing. I'm doing mine. We live, we live like four hours apart. Just, you just grow apart sometimes in life. That's how it works. You drift apart like old beech wood floating around in the, the South Pacific ocean. You just, you drift apart after a while. Um, uh, the next one comes from Beatrice Chaswick. I thought of the perfect way to explain Thor love and thunder. Thor 1 and 2 is Friday the 13th, Thor Ragnarok is Scream, and Thor Love and Thunder is a scary movie. 
I would just say Thor Love and Thunder is too much indulgence from the director who has the mindset of a 12 year old child who makes the same repetitive, terrible fucking jokes every 10 minutes with screaming goats, which the fact that they allowed that to happen, first of all, is a crime against humanity. Second of all, they made Thor a complete joke. And am I on third or fourth of all? Anyway, the cinematography, the look of it was completely atrocious looking. Now, I will say the third act where it becomes black and white, where they're fighting uh, Gore the God Butcher is kind of cool looking. But outside of that, it's sort of an ugly looking movie. And just the sequence where they go to talk to Zeus, played by Russell Crowe, like it just... Nothing was hitting home. You know, for me, when it comes to Taika Waititi as a director and a, and a screenwriter, I think the the perfect blend of comedy, but also taking itself a little bit serious and giving giving you an interesting story was Thor Ragnarok. Like, like it pushed the lines of comedy and slapstick as far as it could, but right at the last second, it would tone itself back to give you like an entertaining story where you could take it somewhat serious. Um, and I think it just had better characters in it. You know, this, the characters, like, I don't want to see Jane Foster become Lady Thor. I don't want to, like, th- I, that just was not a good backbone for the film. It just, I don't think it's what that movie needed. And I don't think that's really the story most people wanted to see, uh, or at least myself included. You know, I think Ragnarok had everything it could. It did everything it could. And I think going forward with the Thor franchise, I think it's time to go a different direction, maybe slightly more serious, serious, and probably replace the director with someone else. I would like to see it go back to something epic and serious. Make this badass Viking god what he should be. You know, stop, stop making him do SNL jokes every seven minutes. I think that's what I would like to see. Uh, Andy Sanchez says, John, Black Panther 2 was awesome. I really enjoyed it. In my opinion, it was better than Thor Love and Thunder. I would say Black Panther 2 was better than Thor Love and Thunder because it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a two hour joke. Yes, I would agree. It is a, I think Black Panther 2 is a better movie than Thor Love and Thunder. Absolutely. Uh, Joey Ruiz, Lord of the Rings uh, says, what hotel did you stay in Vegas? Where is Fantasy Lab? I stayed at Treasure Island which is sort of junky. It's treasure Island's kind of like a junky sort of like family hotel. That's a little bit dungy and like out of date, but that's sort of, when I go to Vegas, that's sort of what I like a little bit. I don't know why it takes me to like a happy place, but I was really mad that the pirate show has been discontinued for 16 years. For some reason, I didn't know that the fantasy lab is connected to the mall. That's right on the strip of downtown Vegas. So if you go to that mall, it's literally connected to the mall at the very end of the strip across from treasure Island, wherever that mall is, that's where the fantasy lab is. I don't remember the address, but it's right there. A quick Google search. will will get you there. Uh, Michael Barton says also, John check out the meow wolf art exhibits, cool, insane interactive museums. I was high on sativa gummies. The first time I went that's always makes an interactive experience far better. I do. It makes movies better too. If you watch them while taking some, um, mind altering gummies. Yes. And I'm not talking about Sour Patch Kids. Uh, the next one comes from, Oh, hi, Mark. Bent or not bent. They're still chunky. Don't talk about my toes like that. My toes are long, like little fingers, man. You freak, you weirdo. What we're referencing right now is a lot of people have foot fetishes on YouTube. I'm not going to name any names, but Ohio Mark is one of them. And I took a picture of my TV last week, not even thinking about it. My foot was in the picture and people have clung on to that shit. So I'm going to start an OnlyFans for my feet. I'm just putting it out there. Um, that's not true, but I don't have chunky feet at all. I have very long, slender feet. You got a bad angle. I don't want to say it again. (laughs) The next question. Let's move on here. MVS says, what character killed the movie worse, Corey Cunningham or Cole from Mortal Kombat? Also, I agree with you. The Hangover is overrated. Yeah, The Hangover is 
hard to even watch anymore. It was fun for the year it came out. And then after 2010, you're like, why am I watching this? <sighs> Corey Cunningham was a terrible character. He was a waste of time. At least the character of Cole was a good character to help bring other characters into the mix. And they told the story through that character. And it sort of led to something, right? Corey Cunningham was just there. He's a weird freak um, Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe. And then he gets like addicted to like killing people. And then he just slits his own throat because he wants to date some chick. I, I don't know what was happening. It was terrible. But the character of Cole from Mortal Kombat was a really boring, bad character. I don't know why they decided to make up a character when you have 87 other characters you could have just utilized. But I would say Corey Cunningham was by far the worst character. Uh, Rux says, how many movies do you watch in a week? It really depends on the week. I would say probably a couple. I would say maybe two. It, it Really sometimes, though, what I do, to be honest with you, I watch more than that. But there's so many times where where I rewatch movies I've, I've already seen 80 times and I'll watch like the first half of the movie when I'm like eating or really bored or like kind of messing with something else on my phone. And um, I don't finish the second half of the movie because it was like I'm filling up my sometimes I want to go to my happy place. Right. And sometimes if I want to go to my happy place, I watch like the first two acts of a movie before the story culminates and concludes because something about the conclusion of that story, it makes me feel sad. I'm like, Oh man, the adventure, the journey's over. The story is done. But if I leave off at the halfway point before it's over, I can just stop the movie and go on with my life. And, and for some reason that makes me feel better. Am I the only one? I do that all the time. There's like all my favorite movies of all time. If you go to like uh, if you go to my HBO streaming service app, you'll see, the runtime of each movie I watch. And it's always like I watch 70% of every movie that I like over and over. It's I need, I need counseling. I don't know what that is. I just don't want it to end the same way. I feel about life. I don't want to get to the third act that the third act is always depressing. Uh, Mike Peter says, did you see the Santa Claus trailer, the Santa Claus's trailer, or the Santa Claus trailer? Uh, thoughts. I did not see it. I don't know. What is that? I, is that a new trailer somewhere? I, I, I don't know what it is. Is Tim Allen getting paid $2 million for each episode? He hated filming the movies. I'm surprised he's thirsty for more. Did Tim Allen come back for like a Santa Claus show or something? What's happening? Uh, Weird Al Yankovic will direct Thor five. It felt like you directed Thor love and thunder, to be honest with you. The way the over the top slapstick humor went down, by the way, did anyone watch the Daniel Radcliffe Weird Al Yankovic biopic called weird on Roku TV? Eh. Uh, Isaac says thoughts on John Campio crew, fake laughing at each other's corny jokes, whatever makes them feel better about themselves. I don't know, man. I, I occasionally have watched a few of his clip videos. Um, I sort of just, I'll be honest with you. I sort of liked when it was just him talking to a camera. I think that is what I want. When I see like seven people in his crew, just we, and, and then every single person has to give their opinion. And then 25 minutes later, after nothing has been said, I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't do this. Um, so yeah, I, I would rather just, if he just went back to making videos in his office with one camera, I think that is, that's what I would rather watch. John, can we still mail you things? I have to get a PO box again. Yeah, put those bots in time out. There you go. Thank you, man. James Dozier says, hey, John, how are you doing? Good, sir. What are your thoughts on the movie Cocktail from 1988? I watched it this past weekend and overall enjoyed it, but kind of a guilty pleasure kind of way. Cocktails uh, with Tom Cruise. I liked it. I remember watching that multiple times as a kid. I like when he's 
in New York City trying to get a job. And the first act of the film, I think, is like the most interesting aspect of it where I wish it took more time. But once he becomes a, like a professional bartender and he's working in some huge nightclub and it like if you were if you went to one of these clubs, Tom Cruise's character works at right by the time they're done, like flipping the drinks around and mixing shit and it's all hitting the floor and blah, blah, blah. It would take fucking three hours to get a, a, a margarita at one of these places like no, thank you. They need to hire more bartenders who aren't flipping shit around and just serve the damn drink. I'm not here for the show. I just want to get drunk. I don't care about your your flippy dippy skills, Tom Cruise. Um, but yeah, I liked it. I liked uh, Elizabeth Shue in the movie quite a bit too. Uh, first time actually seeing this live. Hail Saint Flick. Well, thank you for that. John, top three Mortal Kombat characters. Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and... Are we talking about? Are we talking about from the games? Because that's that could change. That really that depends. I mean, if you're playing Mortal, if you're playing Mortal Kombat three, I'm definitely gonna pick the character character of Cabal because he was overpowered as shit. He had a move set where you, and a combo set where you could just dominate anyone. He was the most overpowered character in the entire game. So if you're gonna pick a character from Mortal Kombat three, you gotta pick Cabal. He was my go to. Uh, John has an underlining fear of death and letting go. I'm, I think I'm pretty good at letting go. I've done it many times in my life, but yeah, I think I just, the, getting old is the terrifying thing, right? Nothing gets better when you get old. Nothing. It's just like you get physically weak and you're just not as capable of doing things. The, your survival rate in certain situations just starts, just starts to dwindle. Ah, it's scary stuff, man. Uh, Forbidden Fruit 73 says, Thoughts on the 40-Year-Old Virgin? I like that. It's a great movie. It still holds up to the, today. It has jokes and humor that they won't redo anymore, which is why I appreciate it even more. I think if I had to pick one Steve Carell movie, that would pro- probably be my favorite movie he's ever made. Uh, the next one, Chris Brinkley says, Hey, John, did you see All Quiet on the Western Front? I've heard good things. I've heard good things as well. I have not watched it yet, and I'm a huge fan of of war epics. Um, so I, at one point, I will get around to checking it out. I just haven't yet. Baby Jupiter says, Hey, John, tips on being a new content creator. Thanks. Well, it depends what kind of content you're creating. Anymore, I will be honest with you, um, it's it's tough. Nowadays, I mean, everyone, everyone and their brother and their third cousin is creating content somewhere. And it's really hard to keep up because some people just night and day, like they will sit there and just create content, upload it. And just like else, they don't care about anything outside of that. They are tunnel visioned and hyper focused on just creating more content. And I cannot keep up with these people. I envy these people. I wish I could do it, but I just can't. I need a separation. I need to go to my quiet place and and think about my life before I come back and push record on the camera. So my advice to you is it depends what you're doing is just get it out there. See whatever, see what's working and duplicate it and add your own spin to it. Um, Right now there's so much competition. Everything is saturated. Uh, So really whatever genre you're in, you got to do it and just stand out. I mean, if you want more views and quick attention, I would say TikTok is a great place to start because you can gain an audience in TikTok fairly quickly if you're consistent. That's where I would say to start. Um, but YouTube, man, it's it's harder than it's ever been. Uh, Kano says, John Campia sometimes comes off as a know-it-all sporadically. Yeah, you know, the thing is, I can look at people and I, I can like read their personality types and I know what, how they actually are. I can just, I can sense it, right? There's a certain narcissistic behavior I can pick up from people just watching five minutes of them on YouTube. And typically I'm right. You know, I've, I've met a lot of people who've made YouTube videos over the years and I've met them in person after seeing their videos. I will just say I'm 99% accurate when it comes to that, that theory. So 
coming across as a know-it-all typically is consistent with narcissistic, narcissistic behavior. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 there you go. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, next comes from, uh, the next one comes from Baron. How is Quentin Tarantino able to keep you engaged with his characters talking about cheeseburgers in Paris, etc.? Um, yeah, the thing with Quentin Tarantino and dialogue and filmmaking and characters, first of all, he gives you characters that you can latch onto that are interesting, good or bad. You enjoy watching his characters. And the greatest thing Tarantino does is he can have characters have a meaningless conversation that does not carry on throughout the story or, or add anything to the actual story of the film and make it truly engaging and immersive. And that, that just gives him a credit as a writer. You know, that's, there's something about that. That's fascinating. And I, that's what I enjoy about him. Whenever I watch a movie where every single thing that every single person's doing is directly relating to achieving the goal in the movie, I'm just like, wait, 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 that's not how life works. Sometimes in life, you step away from that objective, that goal, and you go a different route for a couple of minutes. And it's those different, it's those minutes that I think are truly fascinating in life. And Tarantino knows how to hyper-focus on those and put them into his screenplays. And I love shit like that. You know, Kevin Smith, you know, com- different directors on different spectrums, but Kevin Smith also has those, those conversations with his characters where they just talk about nothing for five minutes. But it's the kind of shit real people talk about. And I latch onto that. So to me, that makes it relatable and makes me like it more. So I f- hopefully we answered the question. <laughs> Uh, the next one comes from DJ Run. Speaking of not watching the third act, what is a movie that was ruined by a terrible ending? What is one movie that, oh gosh, where do we start with that? Prometheus. There you go. I'll give you one right there. Prometheus's third act ruined the movie. Could it have been much better? Yes. There was so much you could have done. You have a high concept sci-fi film. And it's just like they dumbed it down to the point of taking me right out of it. You know, you had, you had the, uh, the engineers, these godlike beings from another planet, another galaxy who are more or less responsible for creating earth or creating life on earth. And they are sort of like another version of God to us, right? That is this alien life form created earth. So in a way they would be our gods. And I thought that concept was so intriguing and then by the third act of Prometheus, once we finally encounter them and we go to have a conversation with them, what do they do? They just rip the old guy's head off and go, I'm mad. And then you have xenomorphs and then just, it's just like, it could have went so much differently than it did. Um, so off the top of my head, I'm going to go with Prometheus. Everything was working so well. But that's a great question for you guys. If you guys are in the normal chat, what is a great film that the third act ruined it? John, looking good. Nice camera. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you for that. I like to look glossy for my live shows. Uh, Chris says, John, do you have any new videos planned? I do have a couple new videos planned. Uh, One thing I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start doing a flick trip at least once or twice a month. And I can do more flick trips. The reason that we don't get as many flick trips as we once did is I used to focus on doing one big event in a flick trip video. Like I'm going to go here and do this because this one big movie came out, but I've, I'm going to, I'm going to change up flick trips. What I'm going to start doing is every other day I do something relating to movies. Sometimes I go to Best Buy or Walmart and sometimes these trips to these places don't really need a dedicated video, but what I'm going to start doing is recording a whole bunch of like three, three or four minute clips of all these places I go throughout the month. Like if I go to the movie theater, if I go to Best Buy, if I go to Walmart, if I go to mega replay, whatever relates to movies, if I'm sitting at home watching a movie, I'm going to record all these clips. And then what I'm going to do is take all these different clips and put it pretty much put them into one big video. That's what I'm going to do with new flick trip videos. So you're, you're sort of going to get a, like a culmination of two weeks of my life condensed into one video. So let me know if you like that idea. 
I'd like some of your feedback. Let me know. Okay, we got a few movies here. Ready Player One. Yeah, the third act was pretty weak. The Wolverine. I do agree. When he when he fights the big uh, robot Transformers, uh, Silver Samurai. The Lost World, Jurassic Park. I didn't hate the third act of that, to be honest with you. I like that they actually got to San Diego. Uh, Event Horizon. Uh, we got Eli Roth's Hostel. Yeah, I do agree with that. Wakanda Forever was all right. Uh, Barbarian's third act was bad. Yeah, it was a little messy. I will say that. X-Men The Last Stand. Yeah, that, that whole third act was a little bit junky as well. I didn't hate the third act of X-Men Days of Future Past. Okay, the next one comes from... Uh, Joey Ruiz, Lord of the Rings, who says... Are you now friends with Austin Burke? How far apart do you guys live? Ever walk around Vegas Fremont Street? Chucky and Jason and are in it walking around. No, I have never been to Fremont Street. I've been to Vegas like three or four times now, and I've never made it down to Fremont Street. Maybe next time I'll definitely check it out. Um, Yeah, me and Austin, I, I, yeah, we're pals. You know, I saw Austin, uh, who, if you don't know who Austin is, he makes movie reviews uh, very consistently on his channel. Uh, first time I ran into him was at uh, Doctor Strange uh, and uh, Doctor Strange, whatever, uh, Doctor Strange 2. And yeah, I've seen him at so many other screenings since then. So yeah, we're pals now and uh, we might see a movie Monday, we might see Knives Out to Monday, but he lives in Lexington, Kentucky, which is quite a distance from where I live, but we have the same city that we go to screeners in, uh, so we both always meet in Columbus, Ohio, because it's the same distance from each of our cities, which is like two and a half hours away. Not not the shortest drive, but that's usually, we go to the same place to see the screenings, uh, so we always run into each other, so Yeah. Uh, Cloudy Rogajan says, you mentioned in your Blu-ray collection video that The Hangover is not a very good movie. I realized after a few viewings, it's it's only two or three parts that are funny, then the rest is really generic. Yeah, I never really thought the humor in Hangover was funny. Like, not much of it really does, other, outside of the man purse, or the man stat, satchel, it, not much humor makes me laugh in that movie. Uh, Fremont is a cesspool. Yeah, but I like going to cesspools. Something about it's really interesting to me. Claudia Rogajan says Spider-Man 3's third act was bad. No, all of Spider-Man 3 was bad. But the third act was just a culmination of bad. It's like, ooh, studio interference. You can almost see it on the screen. Look at all that. Oh, look, there's Venom for three minutes because the studio said they wanted him in the movie. That's what happens when you have untalented hack executives telling you what to do. You get movies like Spider-Man 3. Dan says, good evening, sir. Well, good evening to you too, Dan. Walter says, which Tarantino character would you have dinner with and why? Oh, man. Maybe Rick Dalton. I actually, I, I relate to the character of Rick, Rick Dalton quite a bit. Maybe more than I want to admit, but I would say Rick Dalton would be a, a fun character. But in all fairness, now, if we can have any movie, maybe Jules from Pulp Fiction, played by Sam L. Jackson. That'd be an interesting guy to sit down and have, have dinner with. Just saying. Walter, or no, we already answered. Azim the Dream Review says, Hey, Johnny, what does your day-to-day -day schedule look like? Do you wake up like Pat Bateman? When when do you usually work out? And will we get more flip trips, please? Yeah, we just talked about flip trips and maybe a new way of making those. Um, But yes, you will. Uh, usually, it depends. It depends what I'm doing, what I have to do that day. If I have a lot to get done, I prefer to wake up earlier. Uh, for some odd reason, working late at night anymore is sort of depressing and it just feels really tedious to me. So sometimes when I wake up and the sun's still out, I can chug some iced coffee. 
Um, if I wake up and I have nothing to do, I hate waking up too early. If you wake up too early in the morning, no one I know, all my friends are at work because they work normal nine to five jobs. There's nothing fun to do. Everything fun is closed. I mean, what do you do early in the day besides just like wander around the house in your underwear? So typically I, I wake up, I sit down in front of my computer. I go through a shit ton of emails. I respond to emails. I go back and forth. I try to figure all that out. If I have a video, I usually take notes, shoot it, edit it. Um, but when it comes to like video making, I try to like dedicate one or two days a week to doing it so I can just like get it all done in one day and not drag it out. Um, and then occasionally I go to the gym. I try to hit the gym nowadays, like two times a week, maybe three. I went the other day. I go later in the evening nowadays because the gym is way too packed. And I just don't want to stand there and watch some 14 year old kid do bicep curls that are way too heavy for him. As he looks at himself in the mirror, every 14 seconds, uh, taking pictures on Snapchat, I just can't take it anymore. So I go later in the day when it's less busy. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, life is pretty simple nowadays, man. I'll keep it real with you. I, I have a new house now and I spend a, the majority of my time like fixing up little details and, and going around and hyper-focusing on things that are wrong with it that I need to fix. And, uh, st I'm still sort of unpacking all the shit in my garage currently. So that's typically what a day in the life of mine looks like. It's not intriguing. I assure you. But last night, what we did is we watched, um, we got a, we have a popcorn machine in our, in our th theater room and we made like the most delicious popcorn machine, quality popcorn I've ever had in my life. There's like these little kits that you can buy on Amazon. It's like a little pack of butter, salt, and the seeds. And it comes all in one. You dump it into the, the kettle. You turn that shit on. It pops. Oh, my God. It's the best popcorn I've ever had. Better than movie theater popcorn. By far better. Uh, and we we had that. And we watched Weird last night. And I watched some WWE Smackdown. Like the weirdo nerd I am. And then I watched. I think I watched one more movie. And I don't remember what it was. So. That's what yesterday looked like. And now I'm here talking to you guys. I was going to play Call of Duty with my friends, the new Call of Duty. And after playing it for 12 minutes, I was like, this is just the same shit. I'd rather make a live stream. So here we are. Let's keep going. The Iron Minotaur says, love your videos and critique of movies. I know you were probably asked this question, but what was your favorite Kevin Conroy Batman episode or moment? I, I, I always go back, to, for some reason, I always go back to the Mr. Freeze episode. For some reason, that made me feel something as a kid. Uh, there's plenty of other episodes. I mentioned I liked every episode that, that ever had Bane in it. Um, I'm trying to, like, recall specific episodes. And, like, it's been so long since I went back and revisited the, the series that I'd be hard-pressed to pick one right now off the top of my head. But those were typically always the episodes I enjoyed the most. I know someone said the, their favorite was the uh, Two-Face episode. But yeah, I think maybe tomorrow I might go back and watch a few episodes of the Batman animated series. Azim the Dream Review says, also Johnny, have you seen the underrated Iron, um, the underrated Lion film called The Ghost in the Darkness with Val Kilmer and Michael Douglas? Also, where do you get that beautiful Jurassic Park hoodie? I have seen that movie many many years ago. I I don't remember loving it all that much. I don't remember much about it. Um, but I have seen it. It used to play on Showtime quite often back in the late 90s. I got this Jurassic Park hoodie from Reebok. I've done a whole bunch of uh, sponsorship deals with them over the years. They have their own custom line. Hang on. I'll show you something. Hang on. Yeah, Reebok put out these like custom Jurassic Park shoes or not custom, but a line of Jurassic Park um, featured inspired shoes. These are pretty cool. These are like hiking outdoor shoes anyway. Um, I'm supposed to I'm going to make a quick video about those soon on this channel. Um, and also one other thing I'm going to start doing on this channel is I'm going to start doing reviews of not movies because I do that shit on the Flick Pick channel. I'm going to start doing more reviews of just random things, things I use like TVs, uh, projectors, tech things, cameras, just quick, basic reviews. I'm not going to turn this into a te tech channel, but I just want to give you guys like more reviews on shit that I actually use on an occasional basis. So that's one new series I want to start doing. 
I just want to start making the videos I'm interested in making, you know. Uh, Gabe K says, howdy ho, little vermin. John, if you had the opportunity to make a low-budget indie film, what would the general plot slash vibe of it be? I'd like, I'd love to make something in the vein of Columbus or Before Sunset. Thank you for the question, Gabe. How much budget do I have? That is very important. I need, how much of a, are we talking like $10,000 or more? It really depends. I would say if I had to make a, a low budget indie film, it would definitely be crime driven with some dark humor. I need, I would make something in terms of like, think of like Fargo. Think of something like Fargo. Um, with that amount of levity and humor, but some crime to back it up. What would the, the overall plot be? Um, I would say let's, I'm going to focus on a pizza delivery driver one day in the life of this pizza delivery driver. And I think there's a lot you could do with it. Now, where does it culminate? Where does it go? I'm not quite sure, but it would lead into something bigger and better in the third act of the film. That's maybe the, the movie I would make. That's my general concept off the top of my head. What am I doing with it? I don't know. But I will say this. The pizza delivery driver is like a middle-aged guy. Think of someone like um, someone like Billy Bob Thornton. You know, something like that. And something crazy happens by the third act of the film. He's sort of caught up in this situation he needs to get out of. There, There's my indie film. James Dozier says, do you like collecting 4K steelbooks? If I can get a, a 4K movie and it's the steelbook version and I like the way it looks, I'll probably get that version, yeah. I like the heavy weight of them. They feel more durable, like they'll be around much longer than a piece of paper or a piece of plastic. Absolutely. Mike Peter says, Yes, Tim Allen is back as Santa Claus in Disney Plus series as a sequel to the movies. Also, favorite Xmas movies that aren't Home Alone 1 and 2. Yeah, I th I think I knew that already for, for some reason, Tim Allen coming back for the Santa Claus series, which I'll probably never watch. I do like the Santa Claus, the first movie with Tim Allen. I love that film. I remember seeing it in theaters. Favorite Christmas movies outside of Home Alone 1 and 2? I'm going to go with A Christmas Story. That's an obvious pick. Jingle All the Way, clearly a guilty pleasure movie. Uh, what's another good Christmas movie I enjoy? Oh, I like uh, Christmas Vacation uh, with Chevy Chase. I think that's another great one. I think those are a few off the top of my head. I was never really big, a big fan of movies like Elf and things like that. Uh, Diego Bahina says, have you listened to funk music? It's the new gym anthem. What is it? Funk? Funk music? Or is it punk? I don't know what funk or punk is. I don't know, man. Uh, I listen to a little bit of everything when it comes to the gym. Uh, it can be epic music. It can be screamo music. It can be heavy metal music. It just really depends. Like, um, as I, the last couple songs I've added to my Spotify are uh, As I Lay Dying. It's a song called Roots Below. Uh, there's a lot of Five Finger Death Punch on there. There's some epic music by Six Nights. What else do I have on here? I got some Metallica on there. Um, it's really a hodgepodge of everything I listen to. But like, yeah, Five Finger Death Punch is like one of my favorite bands I listen to when I'm in the gym. They just like the rhythm of their songs, like gives me what I need when I'm working out. Uh, Sack of Wine says, John, I've gotten fired twice in the last three years. I start my new engineering job Monday. Send me good vibes and advice on my fresh start. Also, could I get a Morgan Freeman impression as my boss on the first day of work? I don't know what to say to you about that. <laughs> you either get busy walking or you get busy dying. I don't know. Um, I hope that was sufficient. I'm sorry. My voice is kind of a little... Little, let me take a sip of this.
<clears throat> My name. I can't do it. I, I can't do the crackly Morgan Freeman right now. I don't have it, man. But good luck on your job. Good luck with your new job. Try not to get fired for a fourth time. And I will just say this. I've, I think I've been fired from every single job I've ever done. But it's only because I allowed myself to get fired. I stopped caring. But good luck, man. Uh, Azim the Dream Review says, Johnny, you said, Johnny, have or do you like to eat certain foods when watching movies like that show that... G- okay, I'm really confused by this question. Movies that show that good on screen. For example, pizza for Spider-Man 2, cheeseburgers for Pulp Fiction, or even McDonald's for the founder. Yes, okay. Yes, do some movies that showcase a certain food make me want to eat that food? Absolutely. Whenever, like the founder, yes, I ate McDonald's for a month after watching that movie. I feel a little bit dirty about it, but I did it. Um, the I'll tell you one, the... The movie Hook, when all the Lost Boys are sitting around imagining their food, and then all of a sudden, like, blue pudding is right there in the middle of the table with giant turkey legs. Oh, my God, I need blue. I need whatever that blue shit they're eating. I want to eat that blue shit. So, yeah, I get it, man. Like, in Home Alone, when they're eating pizza in the first act of the movie, uh, Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. Uh, I want to drink a Pepsi. I don't even like Pepsi, but I'll drink one. So, yeah, I, I get it, man. Uh, Claudia Rojan says Spider-Man 3's third act was bad. Yes, it was. Uh, DJ Run says, what is the most annoying stereotype of YouTubers? This most annoying stereotype? Mm. Well, I don't know. It, it, there used to be a stereotype years ago, but I think that slowly faded away because everyone in every different genre, background, personality type to some degree there's like they make youtube videos now now you have like senior citizens making youtube videos you have you know every different age group every different personality type is making youtube videos at one point it used to be just uh, like loud annoying people making youtube videos that was the stereotype um i don't know it's tough to say like stereotypes anymore of sort of like faded off into obscurity when it comes to YouTube. At one time I, you could make that claim, but now it's, it's hard to say. Um, whenever I tell people who don't understand what YouTube is that I make YouTube videos, it's, it's really hard to explain it to them. Like they can't comprehend it. Um, it's, I'm just like, I try to explain it like this. I'm like, you know, that person on the radio that talks in between the songs, you know, like that person makes money, right? You comprehend that like a DJ on the radio makes money. I'm like, I do that, but with a video camera in my face, except I don't have music. And then it gets, then they get more confused. And then I just say, you know what? I, 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 I fucking work at Burger King. And then, then they leave me alone. That's what I say. Uh, Chris says, what was your most recent Dunkin' order? Yeah, I went to three Dunkin' Donuts the other day to look for a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, and I could not find it because the first one was closed. The second one didn't have any bacon or egg, which is crazy. Um, But I always get the bacon, egg, and cheese croissant sandwich with the hash browns. It's delicious. But if I go to McDonald's, McDonald's, I always get the bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle. Oh, so I was just thinking about it right now. makes me want to go get it. Okay, guys, I'm going to answer a few more questions uh, and then I'm going to wrap up this live show. But don't worry, we, we still have plenty of more questions to get through. So if you have anything good that you need me to talk about, I will get to it. And then if you guys are um, YouTube members, feel free to type in the normal chat right here. I'll get to all your questions. So type away. Uh, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can right now. Claudia Rojan says, no, we already answered that. The Movie Maniac says, hey, John. You said you only work out twice a week. How do you manage to keep in such great shape? Could you give us some insight on your diet? I eat maybe one or two meals a day. I drink uh, probably two or three protein shakes a day. I drink muscle milk protein shakes that you can buy from Costco. You can buy a pack of 20 of them for like $20. Good stuff. There's no sugar, no dairy. I highly recommend it. Uh, I Earlier tonight, I ate a California uh, barbecue uh, kitchen, California kitchen pizza. Yeah. Uh, barbecue flavor. Uh, but really I only eat like one or two big meals a day. I don't eat a lot. And when it comes to like eating junk, I might eat like 
a little bit of candy or maybe a dessert occasionally, but I don't really indulge too much. Um, so that, that's typically what I do. And when I go to the gym, I try to work out as hard as I can for an hour and I get out of there. Um, that's what I do nowadays. Uh, Space K says, I don't have a question. I just want to show you support. I've been watching you for years and I absolutely love your live streams and enjoy your channel in general. Well, thanks, Space Case. Thanks, man. Very generous of you. Thank you for that very generous super chat. Thank you for that. Um, it does mean a lot. And thanks for that. How long have you been watching? Thanks for that. Um, the cringiest POS channel is alpha male. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know who, I don't know how anyone takes his advice on like dressing up for women when you're like a, a middle-aged guy with two earrings in your ears and your hair is all greasy. I like, I don't comprehend it, but for some odd reason, people are taking his advice. It's bizarre to me, but there's a lot of like, I'll give you an example. I won't give you a name. I'm not, it's not because I'm afraid to, I'm just, I'll be nice. Right. Some, sometimes I like to be nice until it's time not to be nice, but there's a few YouTube channels that talk about movies that are fairly popular that a lot of people watch. And I get why they watch them because they have a lot of leaked information and it's very topical and I get it, but I don't comprehend how anyone listens to them for more than five seconds. I'm like, how does your head not hurt after five seconds of listening to this person's voice? It's beyond my, I don't comprehend it. I don't know who's watching it. I don't understand the audience, but for some odd reason, people do it and it just makes, it baffles me. Uh, fitness channels are by, by far the epitome of obnoxious grifting. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they're ran by douchebags, but there's some fitness channels of like normal down to earth people that I like. I just, I don't know. The thing with fitness channels is it's hard to find someone who give, who gives good advice that's likable and down to earth, but also entertaining. Like it's easy to find someone giving you a tutorial video on how to like work out. But beyond that, when they try to focus on their own personal life, you're like, eh, just you're not that interesting. I don't really want to watch this. No, it's it's not Jeremy Johns. I, I get Jeremy Johns' appeal. I do. He's he's been doing the same thing for twelve years and it works. I, I'm envious that he can just do the same thing over and over again. But if 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 if, if the formula is not broken, why would you ever fix it? Uh, Tyler Olson film says, do you like red letter media? I do like red letter media. I really do. I used to watch all of their videos. I haven't really kept up with a lot of their stuff in recent, maybe the last year or so, but I always, I always thought they were a really good channel, uh, beyond the trailer. Oh yeah. Mr. 47. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said it, not me. Do you like buff dudes? I used to watch some of their stuff. Yeah, I think they make really good videos. Uh, they make very good, high quality videos. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're a good channel. Your name here says two steps from hell is great epic workout music. Yeah, it is. Usually on Spotify, I just type in like epic music and go down a playlist and find like stuff I like. And that's usually what I listen to. Uh, Chris says plans for two live streams a week. I'm trying. I, I think I did it last week. This week was just a little too busy and I was out of town for a couple of days. Um, but yeah, I, that's my goal I, I want to do two live streams per week. That is typically my goal. Um, I will at least do one, but two is always my go-to. I do remember Mike Chang. I do. I think he made a lot of money and cashed out, man. I uh, started watching about nine years ago from Space Case. Well, think nine years ago. What year would that have been? How old was I? Nine, six, twenty six. So I've been on YouTube for three years. So that was twenty. So twenty thirteen. Right about there. Yeah. 
It's weird. You know, I look back on the different phases of YouTube over the years. And I'm just like, it feels like another lifetime ago. Sometimes I like, sometimes I look at like, I lived in another place. I was making different style of videos and it feels like I, it was like another life. Like I've lived eight different lives in the last decade. It feels like we're living a live action version of quantum leap. Dr. Strange says, have you seen the cabinet of curiosities on Netflix? Glad you will still glad you're glad to see you're still doing videos. I watched the first episode and whenever you watch one of those anthology shows, you're sort of at the mercy of whoever directed and wrote the next episode. And I just kind of got the vibe from the first episode. I just wasn't that into it. Um, I, I just wasn't what I was looking for. You know, I could understand like watching like certain black mirror episodes to a, maybe a certain degree, but the cabinet of curiosities thing. I just, I watched the first episode and I was like, I don't know if I want to watch more. Like I'd rather just watch a good horror film. Johnny is my dad gay. I don't know. You're, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I don't want to know. Just ask him. Um, Jonas, I think that's the best question of the night. How could I top that? Uh, the next one comes from MKF30. Hi, are you concerned since you mentioned Megan will be PG, PG-13 and not hardcore like Chucky and would you ever want a good guy doll in your epic room or would you freak out? I'd take a Chucky doll. I'd set him right back there on my sofa, right there, right in the middle. That's where I'd put him. I hope he murders me in the middle of the night, please. It's not the first time a small inanimate object objects tried to kill me. Uh, Chris says, John, did you buy or are you renting? We, we bought a house. Yes. Uh, Josh Coffey says Black Friday plans just rewatched your breakdown with Crazy Jason back in the day. Yeah, it depends on what's going on this Black Friday. I mean, do I think there's going to be any great deals that I need to go go out and buy? Probably not. Is there some 4K movies I'd like to pick up for low cost deals? Absolutely. Uh, I'll see what's going on. I will definitely probably go out Black Friday and make some kind of video for you guys. Um, I'll definitely check out Best Buy and Walmart and Target. Uh, see what they have. Hopefully they have a good selection, but the last couple of years, they, there's just not really much to buy. Um, but hopefully I, I have, you, have the black Friday ads leaked yet. I'll have to check it out. Hopefully, hopefully Walmart has some good, like $5, 4k movies. Uh, have you ever had to end a relationship because they wanted you to quit YouTube. No, no one's ever wanted me to quit YouTube. It's just their lifestyle that they want you to have isn't good for making YouTube videos. I'm like, I don't need to wake up at eight o'clock in the morning like you. Why would I? I don't have to. That like, if I wake up at eight, I'm not gonna go, wanna go see this movie tonight at six and then make a video following it. That's why it, sometimes that different lifestyles aren't compatible. Uh, Chris says Amazon is doing early black Friday deals. Yeah, I know, but I don't, I don't want to buy shit off Amazon. I want to, I want to go to the store. I want to go amongst the unwashed masses, hold up a little plastic case. That's $5 and go, Oh, I need this. And then I buy it. That's what I want to do. Because if I made a video of me buying stuff on Amazon, that's not going to be that fun. But if I go to Walmart, that's a fun video. The, Eisenator says, do you like how Damon Targaryen can be the most ruthless character in the show, but then have the most heartfelt moments? Absolutely. That's why he's the best character. He rides this fine line where he's loyal. He's there to do the job. He won't betray you, but he's not a, a clear cut good guy. That's what I like about him. Like he will do whatever it takes to get the job done, but he, he, he marches to his own drum. That's what I like about the character. That's what I think I enjoyed most about House of the Dragon. There was, everyone has like this gray zone that they're in. Like no one is pure evil and no one is good. But a lot of people in the show, like they have good intentions, but sometimes they have to do certain things for their own survival. And it's like, you could almost understand it from their point of view. 
that I think that's one of the best things about House of Dragon. Joseph Knowles says, John, do you watch, did you watch Bullet Train yet? No. And I have Bullet Train. Hang on. Let me go. Let me go grab it. Hang on. I have the 4K. They sent me this cool t-shirt of Bullet Train. And I'm going to watch it. Maybe maybe I'll watch it tonight. Maybe I'll go watch Bullet Train tonight. There you go. I have not seen it yet. Um, I've been meaning to. I've heard good things. I've heard mixed things. I've heard the only mixed thing I've heard about it was, yeah, it's entertaining. It's good. It gets a little bit repetitive. Um, but that's really the biggest negative I've heard about it. And speaking of Brad Pitt... Um, every time I get back from Vegas, I have this weird urge. I have to watch Oceans 11, 12, and 13. I just for, I have to watch those movies every time I get back from Vegas. And I did that the other other night, too. And, man, Oceans 11, that's such a good movie. So good. Flick pick, when is the next podcast? I'm, tr- I'm going to get a hold of my co-host, uh, Odin, and I, I got a lot of questions ready to go from you guys, so hopefully soon. Uh, maybe early this week, I'll try to make it happen for you. I'm, I'm working on it right now. I promise you very, very soon. I'm just trying to align schedules with my co-host. And if I can't get a hold of them, maybe I'll, I'll have a guest co-host this week. Favorite Nick Cage movie overall, maybe Lord of War depict the my favorite I don't I think Matchstick Men might be my overall favorite like quality Nicolas Cage movie if I had to give it like a critical rating um but Lord of War and pro- probably Matchstick Men are my two favorites uh <laughs> Andy Sanchez says, John, I would watch a video of you buying movies from Amazon. Maybe I'll do that. I think I could make an entertaining flip trip video where it's just me sitting here buying movies off Amazon. I think there's a lot of commentary I could add to that. A lot of screenshots and stuff. I think we could make it entertaining. And then, and then the end of the video is I just go to my front door. I pick it up and go, oh, here it is. And then that's the end. Joseph Knowles says, should Jeff Spicoli from Fast Times Ridgemont High have been in Point Break? Like, as the character of Bodhi? Sure, why not? All right, one second here. MKF30 says, did you hear that Gallagher died too, the comedian who was always smashing watermelons? You don't even need to say that. I knew who Gallagher was. Um, I did hear that just the other day. And the f- crazy thing was he died literally the same day I watched Weird with Weird Al, the y- Weird Al Yankovic movie where they feature uh, Gallagher. The Eisenator says, how much money did you did you spend gambling in Vegas? I only spent, I think I spent like 200 and I lost like 70 and the thing about Vegas and the thing about roulette is if you can find like $2 chip tables or dollar chip tables, if I play those long enough, I can win. I really can. But when you have to like play the $5 chips, you're going to lose money because you just can't sparse your money in enough places to keep winning. Statistically speaking, it just, it goes against you. Um, so yeah, I, I lost a little bit. Could I have won it back? Yeah. But it gets to a certain point where it's just like exhausting to stand there. But I do enjoy it. It's the only really, it's the only thing I really know how to play in Vegas when it comes to gambling. Like I understand how to play blackjack. I'm just not very good at it. But roulette, I can, I can, I've done decent over the years. Wade's Movie World says, "Hey John, did the 4K purple slash blue color grading of Batman 1989 piss you off?" Yes, they color graded the shit out of the uh, the first Batman film on 4K. It's very blue. It's a little too blue. It looks like Terminator Judgment Day blue. I'm like, no, you need to crank this shit right back up. And if you actually want to fix it next time you're watching it, go to your TV settings and just go to the uh, the warmth setting and crank it up like seven and it'll look like the movie should. 
Like, I don't know what it is with people in studios nowadays. Not everything needs a blue tint to it. Now, this is not a very good example because I have a lot of blue tints going on in this video. So I guess I'm a hypocrite, but please forgive me. Um, yeah, but it, the blue tint thing in Hollywood, man, just, just it's okay to have a little warmth. Big Tony Rocket says, John, all my life, I've never understood the ending of Hook. When Smee is outside Peter's house sweeping the streets, what is happening there? Well, there's sort of a crossover from reality into fiction. Uh, there's there's a w weird, blurry line. What did you imagine? Where did you really go? Did it all really happen? Is Smee just some guy who sweeps the streets? I don't know. There could be a, there's a lot of different theories and speculation. I like to think it's just Smee came back to reality and he's living his, his happy life and he's no longer just in Neverland pretending to be the, the, the second hand of Captain Hook, you know, he, that is who Smee is. He's some guy who lives in England, sweeping the streets. He came back to reality the same way, uh, Peter Pan did or Peter Panning, whatever you want to call him. Or is it Banning? Peter Banning. Either way. Uh, th that's how I always took it. Joseph Knowles says, finally watched Shazam was mildly entertaining. Yeah, Shazam's mildly entertaining. I've seen it a few times. It's, I don't think it's one of my favorite DC movies, but it's an easy watch. Uh, can we do another hour of live stream? I'll sponsor the energy drink. <laughs> you know, the thing is I go to Costco and I buy 12, uh, the 12 packs of the Zoa rock energy drinks. And, um, they're good. I hate to say it, but these are good energy drinks. They don't taste really, they taste very mild. And when you drink them, they feel like they kind of quench your thirst. Like you actually can just drink these throughout the day. They don't taste like battery acid and horse piss. No, I need to, I do need to wrap up this live show here in a few minutes. I'm trying to wrap it up. Um, but you guys got good questions. So I'll keep going. Mr. 47 says two underrated performances, Nick cage and kick-ass and Jim Carrey and kick-ass too. Both good performances, I do agree. I will just say I didn't like how Jim Carrey, after his performance in Kick Ass Two, after the fact, after he took his paycheck, it said, "No, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna promote this movie because it deals with guns and violence." Even though his character in the movie goes against guns and doesn't like violence, it seemed a little bit hypocritical to me. But <sighs> MKF30 says, "Who do you think would win in a fight, Black Adam or Namor from Wakanda Forever?" Literally, if I had a, a fucking toaster, I could beat Namor. Just turn on something hot. He loses all of his power. It's like, I'm. hey, you want to fight Namor? How about we come out to the middle of the desert? We can fight there, and then, then you win. If he's dehydrated, he loses. And when they said the whole thing where he's super powerful as Thor, so you're telling me... Never mind. I guess that's a spoiler. But either way, I, I just uh, that logic doesn't add up for me. Yaman D says, hey, John, sorry, a bit late on your stream. It seems your indie movie plot about a pizza guy has been ripped off in the 2012 movie called Pizza. Laugh a lot. If you don't mind subtitles, I'd recommend it. What what, what it has? What's it called? It's called Pizza. But what's it about? Andy Sanchez says, John, I work in a casino. I'm good at slot machines. I don't like slot machines. Though the, the second time I went to Vegas, I did find a slot machine that I think was broken because if you just kept playing it, you kept winning small amounts of money, like constantly just winning small amounts of money. I sat there for like a half hour and won like $120. Um, Hook or Page Master? Hook, man. Hook's in my top 20 movies of all time. Rock made something good for once? Yeah, this is... His Zoa energy drinks are better than any movie he's ever made. They actually taste like the the, the Rock's... Um, his sweat. All of his sweat is canned and carbonized into these drinks. Thoughts on Red Sparrow? I don't think I watched it. Best American Pie movie? The first one. 
Joey Ruiz, Lord of the Rings, says they ruin No Country for Old Men when they kill Josh Brolin. I was pissed. What are your thoughts? Well, I get what you're saying. Yes, it was very abrupt and he did die. And you thought he was going to survive because he went through all this to win. But the thing about the, the movie No Country for Old Men, no one's really good. There's no real pure person in that film. Everyone has a little bit of wrongdoing. Josh Brolin wasn't necessarily like a good guy. But I do understand what you're saying. I I kind of liked it. I liked that it was abrupt and different. It was unexpected. Doctor Strange says, "John, have you seen Andor?" I did start watching. I, well, to be honest with you, when it came to Andor, I got to episode three. I skipped episode four and five. I started on six. I watched seven, eight, and now didn't they? Inter- I I think I got to the finale, episode ten. But didn't they introduce two more episodes randomly or something? I have not watched the finale of it yet. Um, But really, to be honest, with Andor, you could have condensed everything in this whole season into a three-hour movie. Easily. Like, the tone of Andor is great. The the visuals are great. The, The look of it is great. I just wish there was shit I cared about in the series. Like I, and maybe this is an unpopular opinion. I think the character of Andor is really boring. I think he's a really boring character. Um, and I think if they would have just focused on someone else other than Andor and had everything the same, I think it would have been a, a far more fascinating series. Maybe that's just me. I just, I don't think Andor has all that much to latch onto. Like he has really no personality. He has very little charisma and I, I can't really remember one thing he's done where I'm like, oh, that was cool. Like, maybe that's just me. I Maybe I'm missing something. The, the Eisenhower says, I was in the Army for about a year before having to get out for medical reasons. I have the option to get back in, but never will. It was like Jarhead. Yeah, I've heard that. I had a couple of buddies who did uh, went to the military. At one point in life, I did consider it, but I just... <sighs> I just couldn't, I couldn't buy into the the logic or the reasoning for a lot of things. Best movie poster of all time, uh, maybe Back to the Future. That's a damn good poster. I mean, Jaws technically is like the most iconic poster ever made, but man, that Back to the Future cover or poster. Uh, Claudio Rogajan says, I think you missed my question. Claudio, how do I always just miss your question? How is this happening? Uh, I'm looking here. I'm looking here. Claudio, Claudio. I don't see your question, Claudio. Where is it? Last question you had was about Spider-Man 3, man. Then you had the hangover question. And then I don't see anything else. Then you had a clay face question. I think I answered all of them. If you have another question, just type it in the normal chat right now. I'll get to it. Just type it in the normal chat again. Right now. I'll find it. What does RoboCop eat? John, he, he eats baby food. Regurgitated baby food put into a blender for easy mass consumption. That's what he eats. Yaman D says, Guy goes for his last pizza delivery of the night And as you said, crazy shenanigans happen and not what the synopsis says. Laugh aloud. Well, I guess they took my idea or I took their idea. I don't know. Um, I'll I'll pick different crazy shenanigans. How's that? Have you seen Neil Blomkamp's Demonic? I have not. Randall Commando 41 says thoughts on everything everywhere all at once. I really enjoyed it. It was different. It was fun. I liked the ending of the film. I thought it was a good story that culminated with some crazy shit in the middle. It was pretty good. Is it a movie I'll probably go back and rewatch often? Probably not, but it definitely deserved the hype that it got when it came out. We don't get enough movies that are original and fun like that. Thoughts on Ant-Man? It's okay. I, I hate the sequel, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I actually, I, it's one of my least favorite Marvel films. I remember falling asleep in the theater. 
Alex Carr, let's see. You got a question here, Alex? Sometimes questions do not want to show up over here. Alex Carr, here we go. I was your last question about the Suicide Squad, man, because I I answered it. Oh, have you seen the unbearable weight of massive talent? It's Nicolas Cage's perfection in my eyes. Yes. Yes. Okay, here we go. I have seen the movie. I did a, um, did I do a first reaction after watching it? I swear I did. I think there's a first reaction video on my channel of watching it for the first time. If there's not, I've talked about that extensively in a few live streams where in fact, I, um, first originated wearing the Nicolas Cage glasses. Uh, what's the matter? Your uh, uh, father not go to enough school plays or something. Yeah, these are my Nicolas Cage glasses. Yeah, I've seen the movie. I liked it. Uh, the jokes kind of got old by the third act, um, but I would have just been happy watching Nicolas Cage like stuck in an elevator for two hours. That's all I needed from that movie. Okay, the next one comes from... Claudio, where's your question at, man? I'm not seeing it over here again. Yes, I answered. Yes, Claudio, I answered your hangover question. I did. It was like 30 minutes ago and you asked about the Blu-ray collection video. We specifically talked about it. So don't blame me when you missed it. All right. I've never missed anything. Not once, not ever. All right. Chris says, how come when actors do shit movies still get paid millions, but when I'm in a bad job, I risk getting fired. You don't have an agent and you don't work in Hollywood. John, what's your favorite movie of 2022? It might be between the Batman and Top Gun right now. Probably those two movies. Can Micro Machines stop burglaries? If you're Kevin McAllister, they can. I would recommend paint cans and Christmas ornaments, though. Those, in fact, can stop a, a burglary. Pizza Hut or Domino's? I'm a Pizza Hut guy. Domino's tastes like cardboard. Marvel will never be done, dude. Oh, no. They'll keep going. They'll just keep going and going and going the wrong direction until they can go no more. All right. I'm going to answer one more question here. Claudia Robojohn says, or I'm sorry, Yeaman D says, which one do you think has a better soundtrack, Bloodsport, Kickboxer, or the best of the best in your mind? I don't recall the soundtrack for Bloodsport at all. I, I remember liking it. Kickboxer, I've seen, I don't think I've seen Kickboxer more than once in my life. Though, when it comes to John Claw Van Damme movies, though, I actually prefer Lionheart. I know, it's crazy. Go watch it. It feels like, Lionheart feels like a Street Fighter movie. It feels like a literal Street Fighter movie without superpowers. Uh, best actor that's not in the MCU. Ooh, man, everybody I like has been in the MCU. Leonardo DiCaprio. There you go. Black Panther 2 was horrible. Yeah, why was it horrible, though? Let me know what you didn't like about it, and then I'll, I'll talk about what you didn't like. It was, I'm going to be, to be honest with you, Black Panther 2 was exactly, literally exactly what I thought it would be. Exactly. Based on the trailer, that is the exact movie I thought it would be. So I guess I just wasn't surprised by it. John, what movie would you like to most see upgraded to 4K? If I had to pick one, I, I want Point Break on 4K. The original Point Break would be great. Nightcrawler on 4K would be great. Um, Pulp Fiction... Pulp Fiction's on 4K now, or is it coming very soon? Um, Jingle Unchained on 4K would be great. Uh, 
so anything shot in like 70 millimeter on 4k would look phenomenal um those are a few i'd like to see did you talk about the new movie the menu will you watch it i'll probably watch it once it hits streaming it just didn't look like all that interesting of a concept to set in the theater and watch I don't play God of War. I am not. We Are Cosmo says, What do you think about the Friday the 13th prequel series? I hope A24 adds a really cool story and characters. I've heard things about the uh, the prequel series coming out. The fact that they're going to focus on his mother pre-Jason Voorhees, I think that would be fine if you did that for like the first half of the, the season. But I don't want more than that. They need to get into Jason Voorhees. Now, I understand that to their credit, though, I understand like Jason Voorhees, if he's a quiet dude who's murdering people in the woods, there's only so much you can do with his character. But the dynamic with his mother adds another layer to it where she can be like the sadistic functioning person that can talk as well as be sinister as well. So but I'm hoping by the end of the first season, they get into the Jason Voorhees thing. Uh, and I don't want to watch his mother kill people for three seasons. That's all I'm hoping. But I am I am intrigued by it. All right, uh, let's find one more question here. Uh, Crazy The Rock hasn't been in a Marvel movie. Yeah, well, he's been contractually assigned to play Black Adam for like 12 years. That's why. Stone Cold or Batista? Oh, Stone Cold, man. Come on, it's not even a debate. Yeah, Pulp Fiction's out on 4K. Good to know. Five Hundred Days of Summer. I've seen Five Hundred Days of Summer. It was it was a good movie. I mean, I just not one of my not one of my go tos to rewatch. Thoughts on the Turbo, Turbo Man toy? Sort of lame, and he was always too big. I don't want like a Barbie sized doll action figure that his arms just move like this. No, thank you. If I was a kid, I would not want a Turbo Man toy. I'd rather have Booster. I'm just putting it out there. All right, guys. I think I'm going to wrap up the live show here. We talked for a while. Yeah, a couple, almost two hours, right? 8.50, 9.50, or was it an hour? No, it was two hours. Yeah, we talked for about two hours. Um, so anyway, guys, thank you guys for the questions. Thanks for hanging out for a couple of hours. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, and if you haven't already, make sure you go check out my brand new movie collection video over on the flick pick channel. Uh, we will be doing a brand new flick trip video in like a week or so, maybe less. And, uh, but either way, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good night. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.